Thank you, Madam Speaker. It's an honour to rise today to debate this important bill. Conservatives support free trade. Conservatives support, support expanding our markets. And the Conservative record speaks for itself. During our time in office, we negotiated trade deals with 53 countries, including Peru, Colombia, Jordan, Panama, Honduras, South Korea, Ukraine, including the original signatories of the Trans-Pacific Partnership and the 28 countries of the Canada-Europe Europe trade deal. Conservatives support trade because we know how important it is for our constituents, for our industries, for agricultural uh, uh, industry, and for our Canadian farmers. I'm glad that we're finally debating Bill C-79. But I have to wonder why it's taken so long for the government to finally act on the, CP, on the CPTPP. After all, back in June, it was the Conservatives who offered to have this bill fast-tracked at all stages so that we could be one of the first countries to ratify the CPTPP. And during the summer, back in July, it was our leader, the leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition, who wrote to the Prime Minister and strongly encouraged him to bring back Parliament, to bring back Parliament during the summer so that we could work here to get this bill passed and so that Canadians, all Canadians, can enjoy the benefits of this important trade deal. After all, this trade deal was originally negotiated by our government. And we have to give credit to those who've done the hard work, the heavy lifting, to get the TPP to the finish line. And that's right, it was the member from Abbotsford, the member of Abbotsford who worked during the election campaign to ensure that all Canadians would enjoy the benefits of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. In fact, the very first statement I made in this House, the very first issue I raised in this House was a question in response to the speech from the throne on the Trans-Pacific Partnership, encouraging the government to ratify it at the absolute earliest convenience. Government didn't do it at the time. So why is the Trans-Pacific Partnership important now? We are currently living in an uncertain trading situation. Certainly we as Canadians have enjoyed a long and important trading relationship with our friends south of the border. 20% of our GDP is linked to the trading, or trading relationship with our friends in the United States. This year alone, from January to July, $252 billion of our exports went to the United States, approximately 75% of our nation's outputs. Over the summer, I, like many of my Conservative colleagues, spoke to many of our local businesses, in my riding and neighbouring ridings as well, to hear their concerns. And from the businesses and the people I spoke with, their concern. They're concerned about what tariffs are doing to their businesses. They're concerned about how the costs of the tariffs on steel and aluminum are affecting how they do business. They're concerned about how those costs are being passed on to their consumers and the challenges they're having negotiating with their suppliers and the terms they're going with their suppliers. It's a concern. And I hear it from the small businesses. I hear it from the farmers and the farm families. I hear it from those in the supply management sector and those in the non-supply managed commodities. The uncertainty with the Canada-US uh, relationship, the uncertainty with NAFTA is a major concern for my constituents and I think constituents across this country. Which is why now, more than ever, we need to be diversifying our markets. Which is why when we were office, in, in office as a Conservative government, those 53 countries were essential to that progress and why it is now important that we must ratify the CPTPP. The 11 countries that make up the CPTPP account for a $10 trillion contribution to the global economy, or approximately 13%. As a country, Canada must be one of the first six to ratify this deal so that we can enjoy the benefits of the first movers countries. We need those benefits. We need the ability for our farmers, our farm families, our manufacturers, our exporters, our small businesses to enjoy the benefits associated with the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And what are some of those benefits? 
One example, Australia will eliminate all of its tariffs on agriculture and agri-food products upon coming to force, except for one tariff line, which will be eliminated within four years. Uh, some have asked me, what is that one tariff line? It's bamboo shoots. So for those Canadians who are uh, currently growing bamboo shoots, they'll have to wait four years for that to come into force. But I'm sure that Canada will have a strong bamboo economy within four years to export to Australia. In, uh, in Perth, Wellington, of course, we have a strong pork industry, we have a strong beef industry, and certainly a strong grains and oil seeds industry. For pork, Japan's tariffs of up to currently up to 20% on pork products, including sausages, uh, will be eliminated within 10 years. And for Vietnam, tariffs of up to 27% will be eliminated within nine years. For beef, Japan, Japanese tariffs of 38.5% will be reduced to 9% within 15 years. In Vietnam, tariffs of up to 31% on fresh and chilled and frozen beef will be eliminated within two years, and tariffs of up to 34% on all other beef products will be eliminated within seven years. For wheat and barley in Japan, we'll have specific quota for food wheat of approximately 40,000 tons, growing to 53,000 tons within six years. We'll also have CPTPP-wide quota for food barley, which starts at 25,000 tons, and grows to 65,000 tons within eight years. These are the kind of benefits that Canadian farmers and farm families and exporters can enjoy with an implemented Trans-Pacific Partnership. Now, it's not just Conservatives who are singing the praises of the Trans-Pacific Partnership and the work that was done by our former Conservative government, but industry leaders within the agriculture industry are as well. The Canadian Federation of Agriculture said this, Joining the CPTPP will open unprecedented new markets for Canadian farmers producing export-oriented goods such as red meats, grains, and oil seeds. And certainly when I think of my riding, one of the biggest industries in, from an agriculture standpoint is the pork industry. And this is what the Canadian Pork Council chair had to say. This deal will provide our industry stability in vital markets like Japan and opportunities in emerging markets like Vietnam. Canadian pork producers can rest easy knowing that their livelihood and that of thousands of other Canadians in rural and urban communities who work in the industry is supported by this newest trade deal. When the original Trans-Pacific Partnership was signed, Mark Brock, a constituent of mine and then chair of the Grain Farmers of Ontario, said this, Japan is our largest market for food-grade soybeans, and countries like Malaysia and Vietnam have fast-growing GDPs and are major markets for food-grade and crushed soybeans. With market development a key pillar of our organization, Improved access to these important export countries is a great success for our farmer members. This is the focus of our, of our opposition. This is the focus of the need to expand our markets, to ensure that as Canadians, we have access to a growing global market. We need to have access not just for cane industries, but for the uh, advancement of all Canadians and ensuring that we can enjoy the benefits of up to $20 billion in the next 10 years with the original TPP deal. And yet, we see delay after delay of finally getting this deal ratified. As I mentioned earlier, we offered to have this fast-tracked in June. That was denied. We offered to come back in July in this House to debate this bill during the summer to ensure that we were one of the first six to ratify. That didn't happen. We as Conservatives will support trade. We will support good trade deals. And now, more than ever, with the uncertainty south of the border, we need to continue to work hard to diversify our trading relationships, to ensure that we access the Asian Pacific markets for our pork industry, for our beef industry, for our grains, for those farmers, farm families, and industry leaders that need that access. Madam Speaker, I am very pleased to speak in favour of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. I hope we will see this pass through second, second reading quickly, return to committee, and return to this House for third reading in the near future. Thank you, Madam Speaker.